Welcome to Newsday on the BBC. I'm Sharon Jeet Lale in Singapore. The headlines. I'm Kasia Madeira in London, also in the programme. Live from our studios in Singapore and London. Well, good morning. It's 7 a.m. here in Singapore, midnight in London and 7 in the evening in Washington, where the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, has dismissed speculation that she's preparing to challenge Donald Trump for the presidency. It follows her decision to stand down. She will leave the post uh, at the end of the year. Here's a little of President Trump's glowing tribute. Well, there are many people who get to leave the Trump administration at the time of their choosing and with the president sat alongside them paying tribute. As for Nikki Haley, she remained convinced of the merits of Mr. Trump's foreign policy. Well, I spoke to our North America correspondent, Peter Bowes, a short time ago. Yes, indeed. A lot of speculation over what Nikki Haley will do next. That was Peter Bowes speaking to Sharonjit a little earlier. Let's take a look at some of the day's other news. We are going to stay in the United States because Florida is bracing itself for the arrival of Hurricane Michael. The storm has already caused damage in Cuba, as you can see, a lot of damage. It is now packing winds of 110 miles per hour. That is almost 180 kilometers per hour. Florida's Governor Rick Scott has described it as a monster posing a serious threat to life. It's expected to make landfall in the coming hours along what is known as the Panhandle handle on the Gulf Coast. That's near Panama City Beach. CBS News correspondent Hilary Lane is there for us. Let's take a look at what else is making the news today. And Turkey has said that it plans to search the Saudi Arabian consulate as it hunts for a Saudi journalist who went missing after going inside a week ago. Now, this is a still which... Now, from a cave in Thailand to the presidential palace in Argentina, these are the wild boars soccer team who were dressed to impress as they met Argentina's leader. Now, the boys were made, they made international headlines, of course, after being rescued from that flooded cave back in July. They are in Argentina to promote the Youth Olympic Games. They were touring the palace in Buenos Aires when they stumbled across the president and the vice president. Incredible, isn't it? And they captured the moment in a rather impromptu but rather fitting photo op. And just take a look at this indoor parkour. Now, for more than a million Rohingya Muslims, Bangladesh was really the only safe haven from the violence which drove them from their homes in Myanmar's Rakhine state. The influx of refugees has created huge pressure on resources in and around Cox's Bazaar. And now the Bangladeshi authorities want to ease it by relocating more than 100,000 people to a previously uninhabited island. Brigitte Lemaya has more. This is Newsday live from London and Singapore. Still to come on the programme. Welcome back. You're watching Newsday on the BBC. I'm Sharon Jeet Lale in Singapore. And I'm Kasia Madeira in London. Our top stories. Let's take a look now at some of the front pages from around the world. We can start with the Financial Times, which is uh, leading on the story we've been reporting on as well and pretty much everyone else. And that's Nikki Haley's surprise resignation. The paper calls her departure a blow for uh, President Trump as she becomes the third senior member of his foreign policy team to depart in the past seven months. And the front page of the Straits Times here in Singapore reports on the International Monetary Fund's revised outlook on global growth. Citing various trade tensions around the world, global, global growth is expected to be 0.2% lower than previously anticipated, according to them. And finally, the Japan Times reports on the 2018 Nobel Prize in economics being awarded to a leading climate change researcher. It suggests that the prize uh, could give momentum uh, to policies aimed at helping our planet, a particularly pertinent issue given Monday's United Nations Climate Report. And that brings you up to date with some of the papers. Kasia, there's been an animal rescue in Australia that's proving really popular online. Yes, Sharon Jean, it is really popular online. It's a good news story, which is just brilliant. And it's footage of a little baby whale. I say little, it's big, but it's a baby whale and it's being rescued off the coast of Queensland. Now, United Nations officials say the humanitarian response must go hand in hand with longer term recovery when it comes to dealing with events such as the recent earthquake and tsunami on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, which claimed uh, around 2,000 lives last month. Much of the city of Palu was reduced to rubble and the focus must now be on rebuilding. Well, with me now is Achim Steiner from the... 
Now here's a question for you. Should a landmark be used as an advertising billboard? Well, that is the question in Sydney right now, where the world famous Opera House is at the centre of a growing. Let's get more on this. Phil Mercer joins us from Sydney. And now, Phil, the background to this, this initially, this advertising uh, kind of scheme wasn't allowed. A huge backlash, not only an online protest, but as we saw those images of protesters trying to blank out the advert itself. Promotional purposes before, though, slightly different way, though. Phil Mercer there in Sydney, sales not for sale. You've been watching Newsday. I'm Kasia Madeira in London. And I'm Sharon Jitlail in Singapore. Stay with us because uh, coming up, we've got... From both of us, thank you so much for watching Wednesday.